Hey y'all, Mr. Driver. So we are still in Casper. Got us a load here. Um, unfortunately, um, this changed our time to nighttime. It's now like nine o'clock at night. It's going to be a night run, guys. I apologize. And it's an oversized load. They readjust your time. They more or less they emulate restoring your hours. Um, I may talk about that in another video because I'm going to. I'll try to discuss it in this video, but we'll see. I, I got to pay attention to these guys. This is going to be the one with the escorts again. Um, we're going out to Gillette, Wyoming. We got a short run, it's 128 miles, but it's going to take a little longer than you know what you would think 128 mile drive would take because of the escorts. You remember, 40, 45 is going to be about our max. So um, they've already done the cut scene. We're all hooked up, ready to rock and roll, um, all that stuff. The escorts are more or less just waiting on me at the moment. Um, also too, normally I would run these flashing lights, but the ones that are on the roof is doing something weird. I'm going to have to look into a different light and I'll show you real fast. I'm not going to leave it on for but just a second, but it's doing this light up the whole inside of this cab and guys, I'm not going to drive like that. I'm sorry. Um, I try to do emulate the realism, but I'm not going to drive with that on. I got no flashing lights around me. I'll just deal with it. Um, I will look into, after this run, pull this truck in the shop and do something different with that light. I don't know what yet, but we'll see what I can figure out. So anyhow, let's go ahead and get cruising. Let's go ahead and get on the road. Um, I gotta figure out where all my escorts have ran away to. Looks like they're all out there. Up here. This is, the good thing is this isn't real long. It's just our, more of a standard size flatbed. But uh, it's just wide, so shouldn't be too horrible of a, of a trip wait on this to open I don't know if there's any more camera crews around that was someone I was uh when it was hooking up this guys let me out looks like there's our cop that we're gonna be following let's do this nice and wide And hopefully we won't run into the same problem we did last time. I mean, that's just a kind of a glitch or a bug that happens once in a while. The AI just goes stupid on here. Um, so yeah, we'll just kind of, we'll see. We'll hope for the best and expect the worst, I guess. So, but I apologize that it is going to be a nighttime run. But um, if you question why I like doing these, um, I like doing these for two reasons. Reason one, I have a lot of fun. I think oversized running is a lot of fun for me. Um, the other thing that I enjoy as well is um, the money. I mean, this is only going, what did I say, it was 128 miles or something like that. It's a pretty short trip. I'm paying like $14,000. So I'm going to just set my cruise for exactly 40 and we'll just try to cruise with this guy here. Now these pay good. So that's why I like them. Then we get to blow every red light. One thing I've learned is you kind of have to stay in the same lane as that cop. They do get a little annoying. If you try to get in that left lane, they just come to a complete stop. And if you try to pass them, then just, yeah, it's not good. Now, hopefully this won't take too long. It looked like a lot of it was going to be back roads anyways, so won't be too bad. Um, I'm going to go into outside view for just a minute and kind of get an idea how big this load is. Let me zoom this out a little bit. And I can't see in front of me. But, uh, I'll, I'll try to do another outside view here in just a minute. I'm trying to get one while we're here in town where we've got all the light. Traffic lights. Oh. But uh, we are going to be on the interstate for a little bit. I think some most of it was going to be back road. I was looking at. All right, get, get moving up here. So in real life, with oversized loads, um, you typically wouldn't be getting on the interstate and having the cop block in the whole interstate just so we can get on. 
you typically would not have that happening unless it was some big, 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 crazy load. Um, and one big crazy load that's been going on here lately is there have been a, quite a few that's running out to um, up in Ohio. Uh, they call them super loads. They're, they're really big loads. They're big multi-piece trailers. Um, some weighing up to 500,000 pounds. Um, U.S. restrictions is typically 80,000 pounds on a semi-load. So those I can see they might shut off roads, um, freeway ramps, things like that. Most of the time it's just you just dealing with what you get. So typically, um, I, I've ran I've ran several different oversized loads um, for a few years. I didn't run a whole lot of them, but I I ran enough to know a little bit. Reset my cruise to catch this. So um, basically, in the U.S., most are oversized loads, and including a load like this, you would just have a couple of regular hired escorts. They're they're private escorts um, or pilot cars, depending upon how you want to call them. And their job is to do kind of like what this cop's doing. Um, depending upon the state you're in, um, the size of your load, things like that will depend upon um, how many escorts you need. Um, a lot of loads, it would be just one, just a uh, um, an escort chasing you. Um, and I'll get into that one a little bit because that one's a little bit unique. Um, sometimes you'll have two escorts. Um, so there'll be one in the front, one in the back. Um, if you have a load that's very, very tall, um, the front escort will have what they call a height pole. It'll be like a stick sticking out of the front bumper of their um, vehicle um, or somewhere in that neighborhood. And their job is to make their height stick is supposed to be the height of your load or maybe just a little bit higher. And if their job is to make sure that you're gonna clear the next underpass or any obstacle that's over the road, whether it's signs, uh, electrical wiring, things like that. If you can't fit, then you have to stop, and it, then from there, it's a science project to figure out what you're going to do, how you're going to get around it. Um, on the big super loads, um, depending upon the state, you may have one to two state cops, um, or it could be city cops or county cops. It just kind of depends upon the jurisdictions and all that stuff. That will also include a part of your escorts. Um, it does not um, remove your two escorts you already have, it, um, it adds to them. Um, and obviously this is stuff that the driver or the company is paying for. Um, well, the company in general, because um, a regular driver can't afford to pay um, these escorts. But it's all worked into the load details. So in real life, if I was doing this in real life right here, um, so I have, a, I have a police escort in the front and I believe that is a regular escort in the back. I would have to pay both of them individually um, for their escort services. Um, the, the pilot car behind me, um, he is his own, more or less private, privately owned escort company. Um, he may work for somebody. If he does, I pay that company and that company pays him. And then also I would be paying the officer in front of us um, for his time out here on the road. And it's all set prices. It's mostly the pilot cars that run with you, um, like the one behind us, um, is going to be charging us by the mile. So they're going to go, okay, well, it's this many miles and this is what our rate per mile is. And that's, you know, that's what it is. The officers, I don't know how their rates work. Um, I've been told that it's kind of on a mileage based system, but then it turns into a flat rate. If that makes any sense. So, um, if it's going this from this point to this point, there's just a flat rate that they charge. They don't really charge a mileage rate because they've already kind of figured all the numbers up. Um, so the nice thing is when you do have a police in your escort, um, especially one that's in the front like ours is today, um, typically you do not stop at stop signs, red lights. Um, the only thing you stop for is train tracks and, uh, any traffic that might be around um, they will they typically would run way further ahead of me um, I would say almost a quarter mile maybe an eighth of a mile and they would alert traffic to either pull over or something like that to make room for me to pass or get through there so it's 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 a very unique thing um, it does kind of have to work in a little um, synchronization as it is here um, 
when you don't have a escort that is a state or police officer that's escorting you like we are today you would still have to stop for um, traffic lights and things like that you would have to obey every single law um, now the only time I've ever had police escorts um, that I've worked with has been in Louisiana um, the guy that I was working for um, I didn't need the state escort I didn't need the police escort but he did so with his escort um, his escort basically told me to get up in the very front of everybody and cruise and he, he was just staying in the back he was basically playing rear block blocker he wasn't going up and warning nobody to move over because most of our travel was sit was on the interstate um, when we did get onto the back road he did kind of get front and back and just kind of a mixture um, doing every single thing now the other city escorts that I've worked with also has been in the city of Pensacola Florida um, and it's a lot of to do with some of the oversight stuff that we do um, it's because we're going into the city itself we would go through downtown um, or near downtown um, they would require that that we had a, uh, a police escort and when they gave us a police escort it was usually either two motorcycles or a motorcycle and a, and a, a patrol car that would do all of our blocking um, there was always at least one motorcycle because a motorcycle would literally pull up into an intersection and stop everybody and as I was going to the intersection he would gun it and get back up in front of me to the next intersection um, certain sometimes they would use two motorcycle cops and that way they could do it you know back and forth uh, splitting with each other you know so it was it was definitely interesting and it was fun in my opinion it wasn't because I got to run red lights and and all that stuff even though that's a bonus it was just it was like a highway circus it, to me it was fun I don't know why um, so it's kind of hard to explain but it was just a lot of fun to do um, so yeah as you can see he's moving over like that to let the other vehicles know to get back you know as far over to the side of the road as they can and that's what most escorts would do um, most escorts would actually and I'm going to try this without getting too much trouble would actually get over that line and with they'd have they'd be cruising with their window down they would be pointing for people to get over that shoulder as much as they could especially on a really really big load um, a, a load that could fit on this road like I do they really wouldn't do it they would just kind of ride that line like that cop's doing there and say hey you need to scoot over a little bit all that's really doing is making the AI slow down is all it's doing on here so it's not perfect the way they emulate it on here but it is kind of neat um, like I said, this load here would not require a state escort or a police escort. I keep saying state, I'm sorry. Um, most of the time I've had state escorts. So, yeah, it, it makes it interesting, that's for sure. Drinking. To do that, I gotta take my hand off my controller. And that's the hand that steers. Yeah. Oh, and also we don't. In most states, I've never seen them run 40 mile an hour. You know, unless it's like a city or a crazy road or something. Interstate, mm, 55, 60. Typically, I've had cops been. So in Louisiana, um, if you have an oversized permit, um, you're permitted um, to only drive 55 when everybody else can do 70, which is kind of redundant in my opinion. I don't agree with it, but. Um, the uh, I couldn't tell you how many of the state cops have said we're we're not doing 55. We're gonna cruise a little bit, and they tell you a speed. It was never anything crazy, but they would you know tell you to run maybe 60 or something like that. So it was always different how they did stuff. So we might have enough time. I'll, I'll do a quick basic overview. I was talking about hours of service earlier. So, here in the U.S., we're allowed to drive up to 11 hours a day, and then we have to take a 10-hour um, break for the night. Um, and it's it can be nighttime schedule, daytime schedule. It doesn't really matter. It it it's all the same. The downside is it's a one-size-fits-all program. You know, I don't know about you guys, but I'm sure y'all don't wear the same size same same size. Dang, if I could even talk, the same size shoe. Say that 10 times. As I do. Good. Yeah, we're good. 
I mean, everybody's sleep habits are different. Some people can, you know, get by with sleeping six hours and being good to go. And then other people, they need to sleep eight or 10 hours. So, um, some people do very well if they, um, can just stop part way through the day and take a nap and it, you can do it still, but it, it hurts you in the long run, the way that the log hours of service are. So anyways, that's kind of the basic overview. Um, so they try to emulate that here in the game and how they try to emulate it, I'm not really sure. Um, I actually turned off the fake fatigue simulation a long, long time ago because it was just a pain in the rear. I don't know really anybody that runs with it. There's only been a few people I've known of. But they try to emulate that. So it's like they tried to give me my rest break before we took off and they put us in the dark instead. Um, another note, now that I think about it, another note about permitted loads. Most permitted loads do not run at night. Most permitted loads are only allowed to run on the daylight times. Um, typically they say Sometimes you can start like a 30, min 30 minutes before sunrise. You can start right at daybreak. Um, sometimes it's 30 minutes after the sun comes up. Um, that varies um, by state and by area. Um, also, a lot of towns, um, for example, Dallas or Fort Worth, being bigger cities, they have restrictions during the daytime of when you can drive. And what they're trying to do is keep oversized loads out of the way during like rush hour and things like that. So... Um, there's that to look at. So, you know, typically, you know, in your morning rush hour, you know, probably between, and, well, used to, it was like seven, nine or something like that. But I think rush hour is way different than that. Oh, breaks, breaks, breaks. Oh, this is the gate. We're here. Oh, wow. We are here. That was actually a lot further than I thought it was going to be. Let get out of our way. So yeah, you know, morning rush hour, um, evening rush hour is a guaranteed in major cities of when you could get, when you could drive um, with an oversized load. Sometimes um, there's a lunchtime restriction too. That varies, but sometimes there is one. Um, now, when it comes to some of the big crazy stuff and going through bigger cities, um, Dallas wouldn't be one of them. Let me think here of some that I have dealt with. A Baltimore was one. Um, where I had to, I actually had to park at a way station, take a nap, and then I was met there by a state officer at night. And then we drove at night to my destination in Baltimore. You know. But as you can imagine, that only makes sense to do it that way. You don't want this about right here, huh? There we go. See how we did. Didn't have no accidents, didn't have no big clusters. A couple more partials to our achievements. Oh, there's our 14 grand. Had nothing going wrong. And I got a trailer and maneuvering bonus, even though that didn't ask for it. Nice. All right, guys. So let's see. Is it still out here? Oh, oh they already took my trailer away. So let's, uh, let's at least move to the edge of this road here out of the way. Wait for a second here. And uh, normally I would uh, put our truck, we would look outside our truck, but I can't really see it. We'll go out there and look anyways, but there's the truck at night for anybody that's been curious. All right, guys. Well, um, hope you all enjoyed that one. That one's a little bit different. Um, you know, as I said, why I like doing those from time to time. And, uh, all that fun stuff. So sorry it was at night. Um, I'd like to try to keep them during the day, but guys, it's hard to do without me taking a lot of rest breaks and you miss loads and things like that. So at one one time, I actually tried to um, go pick a load up and then sleep um, somewhere so I could do daylight recording. And by doing that, I lost my load. It like vanished. I don't know what happened on that. I don't know if it was just a glitch or what. So I'm just kind of taking the loads as I get them, guys. Um, and unfortunately, they put us in the dark on this one. So our next run is definitely going to be starting in the dark. Maybe it'll be ending in a little bit of daylight. So anyhow, guys, I'm going to shut this video down and uh, all that good fun stuff. And I will catch you in the next one. See you.